Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're looking at the role of the Chief Digital Officer, the CDO. What do they do? What are their challenges? And, and what's the future of the Chief Digital Officer? To discuss that, I'm joined by Scott Now, Head of Data Platforms and Intersystems. Scott, hello to you, and, and thank you for talking with us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Glad to be here. So I, I think the CDO is a relatively new role. However, Forrester Research and all its wisdom in 2019 said that 58% of companies had appointed a CDO and another 26% planned to. Those numbers seem high to me. I can hardly believe that about three quarters of companies or so have a chief digital officer. I mean, do you believe the numbers? I actually do. You know, I, I think that there's just such rampant demand out there as businesses are trying to figure out ways to differentiate themselves and to leverage the assets that they've built it's a logical thing uh, to go do. And it's a logical thing to elevate to a position where there is visibility and transparency into the efforts that a company's making in this space. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think the, the, the clear question is then, what does a CDO do? And I can think of a few things, obviously, but of course, the, today, everything is digital. Like every company is a tech company. Every task is a digital task. So what does a CDO do? And, and what, what are the challenges for, for, for a CDO? So I think uh, you're on to an interesting topic, and I think there is a, a wide variety between what different CDOs might do in different companies. Certainly much of that is going to be driven by specific business challenges and the maturity of the company and the maturity of a company on their path to digitization and digital transformation. Uh, but inside of that, I think a lot of it is really clustered around two things that are happening in, in all industries. One is that people are starting to recognize that data is really an asset for a company, you know, the collective intelligence of a company, their history and their understanding of the markets is actually something that's as valuable, perhaps, as the products that they actually make. So there's this huge value proposition. The second part of it is that data is everywhere and there's this huge explosion of data. And it's much more complicated than it's ever been to really tie all of these pieces together. And so when you kind of combine those things, it's important, single throat to choke, it's a competitive advantage and it's complicated. The logical, logical thing to do would be to have a very senior business leader kind of take ownership of that space. And like I said, inside of that, depending on the company's maturity and specific marketplace, there could be some variance between what a CDO in one company might do versus another, but I think the drivers are the same consistently. Hmm, interesting. Well, there's a, this really interesting port, report uh, that your people sent over. Let's, let's take a look at that. I'd like to get your sense of a, a few pages from the report. Uh, sure. To do that, I've got to do the miracle of screen share. Let's see if I can technologically accomplish this. I may be pretty impressed with myself if I can. Uh, well, lo, lo, lo and behold, there, there is page three from the report. Um, you know, it's really the, the world of the CDO, among other things, 70% of CDOs say risk, risk data aggregation is, is a primary regulatory concern within their departments. Are, are, are there any of these numbers that in, in your mind really, really pop out like, oh, no, that's a that's a really important idea we should talk about? Well, I think that certainly uh, one of the biggest things that ties into many of the other topics on this page really includes the notion of data lineage. And this goes back to one of the key drivers that I talked about, kind of the complexity of digitization and the complexity of a company's data. And think about how, you know, in the early days of, you know, compute and digitization, right, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, uh, the digital revolution was, hey, I'm going to put all of my purchase orders in a system that I keep track of. And I had structured transactions. I right. controlled it, I defined the business process, I understood the data, and I managed it all. So lineage wasn't really a big deal. Complexity, not particularly a big deal. And yet, it was a big deal. But fast forward to today, where much of our data might be, you know, built in a software as a service application in the cloud. It may be third party data, it may be social network data, it's data that's outside of our firewall and outside of our control. And so without that proper lineage, it's very hard to connect up and then trust what that data really means to use, you know, to use to make business decisions, product decisions, customer interaction kinds of decisions. And I think that also kind of ties into things like risk management and compliance, which is certainly an area 
where, where not only uh, are you at risk of maybe not being competitive or irritating a good customer, but also potentially running afoul of the authorities. And so it becomes mm -hmm. really, really critical and important. Mm -hmm. Well, does that mean that the, the CDO would spend a great deal of their time uh, tracking lineage? Uh, it's an important function, uh, certainly to the extent that, that that can be automated, institutionalized in business process. Uh, I think the CDO or the CDO's organization can spend a little bit less time on it, but it's certainly, I think, it's a critical measure because not only does it tie to the things that I described, but just think about, you know, the expansion of security and privacy in today's world with personalized data. If, right. if, you, if you don't have that lineage and understand the perimeter that you're now protecting, you could be at risk uh, in, in that space. Having proper lineage in the end is most critically important because without that lineage, you can't really have trust in the data that you're using. And without trust, you're really not gonna bet the business on it. So I think that one, if I were to pick a favorite one on here, it would be that one for those reasons, because it just kind of touches so many aspects of success. Which one now? Just so I'm uh, the data lineage. Data lineage. Okay. You know, looking at these tasks, you know, automated governance, um, you know, big data to fully replace their data warehouse, uh, develop an analytics driven business strategy. It seems pretty clear that a lot of this would have overlap with the CTO. The CDO and CTO, certainly, I hope those two individuals are getting along. It seems like one of the clear questions is just occurred to me like what is the difference between a cto and a cdo yeah and, and, and i would characterize that as kind of structure infrastructure versus content mm. right you would expect your cto to say these are the technological standards that we're going to deploy and for uh, you know this reason that reason whatever reason whether to be you know most current most efficient um, more highly secure and those kinds of things. I, and I, I kind of bucket that into the category of infrastructure, not to make it sound uninteresting, because it's actually a very meaty kind of role that, that, that sure. can make a big difference. Right. I view the CDO as kind of the content. Okay, so here's the infrastructure that our CTO has chosen for us from a standards perspective, an architecture perspective. Okay, great. Now that I understand that landscape, I care about the content. How do I go... How do I go um, get connectivity to the data that I need to see uh, and then process that as close to uh, customer interaction or transaction as I can for the maximum business benefit? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So I, 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 as I said, I certainly hope those, those two people. And hopefully are, those you know, two officers kind of get along because, <laughs> uh, you know, they, I think they have a lot of interaction uh, and advice that they would share back and forth. Right. So certainly, the infrastructure and standards folks um, may set up some hard constraints that are regulatory or you know security related that would be really important to the content folks. The content folks are going to create requirements for the infrastructure folks on you know bandwidth and latency and all of the things that really drive uh, success in the in the system. I, I'm sure there are some CTOs out there at companies that do not have a CDO and that they wish there was a CDO on board probably to to help lighten their workload. Yeah, or or maybe they're wearing both hats and have an expanded uh, an expanded infrastructure to cover those topics. And you know, when we were talking uh, earlier, you know, CTO like CDO is a role that can vary based on the scope, scale, and industry that a company plays in. But there is certainly a common set of traits and tasks that need to get taken care of. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what my question is about page 12 here. I think it's a really interesting data point though. Which of the following data intelligence solutions have you deployed? Interesting that automated governance is, is the winner there. Data quality analysis, of course. Data catalog, it also feels slightly ahead of the curve. Um, how, do, how does this relate to the idea of the, the CDO? Is this the, the CDO's full world here? Yeah, I think these things really cover a lot of the aspects of it and, and certainly, the lowest uh, category, but I think the one that is dependent, although all the ones above it really is business glossary, which, which is a synthesis of a whole bunch of things, but ultimately is, is where you create scale and scalability inside of your company, right? So your business leaders and the folks who are talking with customers who are building products probably aren't going to be experts in data governance, data quality analysis, data catalog, data modeling, data. That's not their thing. They're running the business. 
So how do you how do you take that and create a semantic layer around it that makes it consumable by the person who's really impacting your customer relations or your product design and so on? And so, and, and that business glossary, I think, in my mind, is is kind of at the highest level of value. But of course, it, it's not surprising to see that it's got the lowest take rate because it depends on all those other things to be hmm. successful. Uh huh. Interesting. You know, I, I wanted to ask you about the, the future of the role, the future of the CDO role. But I, mean, I wonder, here's the question you may or may not be able to answer. I'll ask it anyways. Is that I think there's probably a lot of people out there who, who would like the CDO role. It's just something that they would aspire to in their career. Is there a kind of a career path or something you might recommend to people if you want to be a CDO? Then you might, you know, you want this, this, and this role, or is that, is that beyond what you normally do? Uh, well, I would say this as, as, as a, um, self-appointed data geek. Uh, I think CDO is like a really cool thing to aspire to totally. because I think in the end, just like in a product company uh, like where I currently work, right? But the head of product management is at the intersection of business, the economics, the technology, and ultimately has a big influence on the success and the direction of a company. And I think CDO is not only just taking that title, but getting the buy-in from the board, from the other senior leaders of the company and creating that, that mission of business transformation uh, is a really great and compelling thing and probably not a bad place as an endpoint in a career trajectory, but certainly done well. Uh, are you the next CEO of the company, the next COO of the company? Absolutely uh, not out of the question. It, I think it's a really interesting uh, place to be. I think the other thing that makes it really cool uh, as, as uh, you know, kind of towards the end of a career trajectory or as an aspiration is every day is going to be different, mm -hmm. right? So you're thinking about, you know, the challenges of running a business and the challenges of digitization and challenges of technology and data. These are things that are rapidly changing every day. And so you're not going to come into work two days in a row and have the same task at hand. Right. And so uh, certainly, if you don't like variety in your work, it's probably not a good job. <laughs> but if you do and you get bored quickly, it's, it's something that you can sink your teeth into for a very, very long time and continue to hone your skills in different ways. You know, I, I hadn't thought of that, but I'm sure you're right about that, is that you know, the nature of the, the digital economy and digital transformation is changing so fast that certainly one month to the other, you know, absolutely one year to the other, the CDO is going to have a pretty different job. I mean, I think, it, say, for example, accounting might, might be a fairly similar job year to year. I'm sure there's some changes, but the CDO is going to be, you've got to be ready for some drastic change if you're going to take that role, which, which, which brings me to sort of the, the, the final question, which is, what, what, what do you see as the future of the CDO role? I mean, I, I, I'm not even sure you can predict it because it's going to change so much. So, but if you look a few years ahead, is there some glimpse of, of what is the future of the CDO role? Well, I think I think for those who do it well and love it, um, they're going to be the future business leaders and, and you know other C level executives that you're going to run into uh, out there, and and that's a really good thing. I do think that there, as anything, when things grow and roles and responsibilities get broader you may see some other sub segments uh, mm -hmm. and some other organizational attributes. You know, it's not long ago where, you know, having a CDO was kind of a new and novel thing. And typically it was like a party of one, right? Right. And now, you know, many sophisticated organizations have a CDO organization. And so I think, I think what you'll see is over time, you know, potential uh, changes, modifications, and growth kind of in that organizational infrastructure as, as it covers more and more territory. And again, I think some of that will also vary. There are some companies whose CDO is also the CSO. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there are some whose CDO is also the CIO. And, and again, as these things scale, is that too much for an individual? Does it become a broader team or really go back into sub-segments of responsibilities? So when you talk about the sub segments, it could be the, the CDO is a leader of the team, but then there's a, say, a, a junior vice president of digital is a senior vice president of digital. Would those be the typical split offs? In, in the yeah, CDO? yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not uncommon in very scaled companies to have not a CTO, but actually an office of the CTO. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a similar concept there. Hmm, interesting. 
uh, Scott, you said it. I, I think uh, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that aspire to that role, and, and hopefully those that are in the role are, are able to keep up with it all. Uh, totally appreciate you sharing your thoughts today. Thank you very much. Thanks again for having me here. Appreciate it.